Father God, you alone are king, Lord. We come here this morning to worship you. We come here this morning to remember you, Lord. Come, open our hearts up to you, Lord. Help my words to be clear. Lord, help us to worship you well during this time. In your name, amen. We come to the Lord's table each week to obey Jesus' command to remember him. During the Last Supper, where Jesus instituted this practice, he foretold of his death. This morning, I want to look at a different time when he did the same thing. I've been in the Gospels a lot this year. There's a passage that always jumps out at me when I read it, and so I want to spend some time there. Um, there are men in the front with Bibles. Um, if you don't have a Bible, they'd love to put one in your hands. Uh, just go ahead and raise your hand, and they'll bring one to you. And uh, while they're doing that, if you want to turn to Mark chapter 8, we'll be looking at verses 31 through 33. As you're turning there, and we begin to look at this passage, I want to talk a little, little bit about how we're going to be reading this passage. Uh, this is a very familiar section of scripture, but I want to look at it from three different perspectives this morning. To start, I want to read verses 31 through 33. I want you, look, you to look at the passage through Peter's eyes. Um, what was going through his head during this passage? Peter never actually says a single word in these verses. But Mark gives us great insight into Peter during this brief section of scripture. So as we're reading Mark chapter 8, verses 31 through 33, let's get some insight into Peter. And he, that's Jesus, began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed. And after three days, Jesus will rise again. And he was stating the matter plainly, and Peter took him aside, and began to rebuke him. But turning around and seeing his disciples, Jesus rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not setting your mind on God's interests, but man's. The first perspective we're looking at this morning is Peter's, and he like, highlights a wrong perspective of the cross and Jesus' death. In fact, let's make some observations about that wrong view. Um, let's start in verse 31. What do you think Peter was thinking when Jesus is making these statements? Remember, Peter was a fisherman, and he left everything to follow Jesus. He's now sitting here listening to how Peter's plans for Peter's life are wrong, and that Jesus is going to suffer and be rejected. Peter's thinking, that's not what's supposed to happen to the Messiah. So he decides that Jesus is off his rocker, and he needs to rebuke him. Can you imagine that for a second? Can you imagine sitting in the presence of Jesus and going, I need to rebuke him? That's what Peter did. Always being the consummate professional, he takes it on himself to be the one to let Jesus know that he's way off in his thinking. What do you think motivated Peter's wrong thinking? Peter saw Jesus' death and impending rejection as a problem. Not only that, Peter thought that Jesus' death and rejection needed rebuke. And Peter missed that Jesus' resurrection had any significance. In fact, part of me thinks Peter wasn't even listening. I mean, if Jesus is saying, in three days I'm going to rise again, that would be the only thing I would hear. Um, but he didn't, he didn't even touch on it. Jesus knew exactly what was holding Peter back in his rebuke and decided to turn the table on him. Which leads us to the second perspective. Let's look at this passage through Jesus' eyes. Jesus opens the passage by telling his disciples what was to come. He then has Peter pulling him aside to rebuke him. And before a word leaves Peter's mouth, Jesus stops him. Jesus recognized Peter's wrong perspective. And before he said a word, spoke to Peter's heart in this situation. Look with me again at verse 33. But turning around and seeing his disciples, he, Jesus, rebuked Peter and said, get behind me, Satan, for you are not setting your mind on God's interests, but man. Jesus not only recognized that Peter had missed the boat in his rebuke, he cut to the depth of Peter's mistake by showing him how, his, how far off his perspective was. Jesus showed Peter that his view of Jesus' death only had temporal significance. Jesus told Peter that he was closer to Satan than God's will in the crucifixion. <clears throat> 
and Jesus told Peter that he was looking at the cross through selfish motivation. Jesus saw Peter's wrong view of the cross and rebuked him in words that none of us want to hear from the Lord of the universe. Which leads me to the third perspective. Let's look at this passage through our eyes. Nearly 2,000 years later, we know the end of this story. We know that Jesus, in fact, went to the cross. We know that he suffered many things and was rejected. And we know the significance of this. We know that in this death, it was a substitutionary atonement for our sins. And we know that he was raised from the dead three days later, just as he foretold. And we know that if we put our faith and trust in the blood that was spilt, we will have our sins washed away. When you get the bread and the cup that Jesus told us were to symbolize his broken body and his blood that was spilt, what do you think about? What does your prayer look like? I'll be honest, sometimes my prayers are brief. Sometimes I'm completely unfocused. Sometimes I come to the Lord's table with the wrong perspective. But we can't do this. When Peter had a wrong perspective of the cross, Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. I don't want to bring a wrong perspective to this time. We need to look at the cross with the perspective that Jesus commanded. So when we remember Jesus this morning, are we being Peter and thinking of our own interests? Or do you look to Jesus and think of God's will? As we come to the Lord's table this morning, we need to remember that our sin sent Jesus to the cross, that he had to suffer as a substitutionary atonement for our sins, and that there is nothing we can do to earn his favor. If you do not put your faith and trust in Christ and his death on the cross, we're glad you're here. And we would ask that you just spend this time thinking about your, the depth of your sin against a holy God. But please let the cup and bread pass by, as this is a time for those that believe to remember God's will in sending Jesus to the cross. Men, please come serve us, and you can take communion on your own this morning.